by your mercy, you will conclude with us on a greater note to the glory and the praise of your name. Thank you, dear Lord. We desire that the day of eternal rest, all of us, you will count us worthy to worship eternally with you and to fellowship with our Lord, the King. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please be seated. I would like again to start from where we took off yesterday, from the book of Matthew. That's the major test for this um, PDZ. Matthew chapter 1. I want to start from there and there again I will conclude as we trust the Lord to pray aright. Matthew chapter 1. Please let's go there together. Matthew chapter 1. And then we are reading verses 3 to 6. And Judas begat Phares and Sarah of Tama. And Phares begat Estrom. And Estrom begat Aram. And Aram begat Aminadab. And Aminadab begat Naso. And Naso begat Salmon. And Salmon begat Boaz of Rekha and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth and Obed begat Jesse. May the Lord bless this word in our heart in Jesus name. Don't forget that we are looking at the real woman the indispensable need of the man with mandate. And the Lord brought to us about five or six women as case study for being the real woman that God wants you to be. We have Sarah we have Tama, we have Rekab, we have Ruth, and we have Uriah, Uriah's wife, and that's Beersheba. And uh, we also added Esther. Yesterday, we majorly, you know, discussed Ruth and Esther. As we are graduating today for the third edition of PDZ, you know, the higher you go in academics, the more you zero your focus. <laughs> you narrow your focus. So I want to take root only this morning to communicate to you what God will have you do in becoming the real woman. The message title this morning is walking the pathway of becoming the real woman. Walking the pathway of becoming the real woman. You cannot just become the real woman by prayer. Prayer alone will not do that. I believe what prayer will do for you is to understand God's mind about you becoming real. And I need to quickly tell you that um, the real woman that you are talking about it's not something that God we newly had it. 
it was imparted into you when you were in your mother's womb. It's your original person. The person that God knows you to be in eternity. The person that descended from eternity to time is what the man with the mandate needed for him to fulfill God's purpose. The person you are in eternity and which God expects you to be here. And when you are here, if you are the person that God knew you to be in the, in the eternity past, that is what qualifies you to reign with God eternally. But as it happened to all of us, so it happened to Ruth that who she was in eternity, not minding that she was born by the Moabite. And she also became a Moabitess. But who she was in eternity was that she was a friend. Her name means friendship. And that's the, the personality of Ruth was to be friendship, was to be a friend to especially to the man that she was meant to marry. Unfortunately for Ruth, she married to Mylon. And Mylon means sick. Sick. You know, when you carry a great potential and you marry a sick person, and you know, sick will eventually die. God started to rewrite the story of Ruth. But for that story to come to a physical reality that shall be written, rewritten, Ruth needed to walk certain pathway. There is a pathway of becoming the real woman. It doesn't come by prayer, as I said. It doesn't come by your secular training. It won't also come by theological training or ministerial training. And I have not said that to rubbish those trainings. Those trainings, you need them. If they are needful to you, you should go for them. But there is a particular pathway that will process you to become the real woman that God knew in eternity past. And that's what I want us to go through the book of Ruth we cannot read the whole chapters of four. Aha. But I will just take you through. We are perusing as it were. For us to see what it will cost you to go through this pathway.
and uh, this pathway Jesus came and he called it discipleship. He also didn't use the word discipleship. You cannot see discipleship in the Bible. What he said is, follow me. So, to simply put it, the pathway I am talking about is the pathway of following the Lord. Sisters, if you are serious and you really want to be the person that God knew you to be in eternity, you have to follow the Lord. And not following the Lord in theory. Not following the Lord in your mind. But following the Lord practically. Now, how do you follow the person that you have never met? It's not possible. To follow someone that you have never met. And for you to meet someone once. You can also follow him. Because meeting someone once. Does not mean that you have known that person. You got to be acquainted with him. So beloved sisters. I have issues and there are many to discuss with you. And they will take you through them one after the other. Trusting the Holy Spirit to help you see what God wants you to see so that you can arrive to God's desired destination for your life. If you have not gotten there, you can get there. But you cannot get there by yourself. You can't get to the place of fulfillment of the reason why you came to this life by yourself. You got to follow the Lord. And how do you follow the Lord? And these are issues that you want to look at. And you want to look at the life of Ruth. But before I go into that, I need to take you to the background of the story of Elimelech, Naomi, Mylon, and Kilion. Elimelech was a man, a native of Bethlehem, Judah. Again, Elimelech was a descendant of Judah. Elimelech, his name means, my God is king. Only that he never allowed God to rule over his life. When you are unfortunate as a woman, and I pray for those of you who are singles, if you are also a daughter of Zion and a daughter of Zion indeed, I pray that you now marry a man who accepted Jesus as his Savior and Lord and never allowed the Lord to lead his life. A man who believes in himself and believes in his brain. A man who believes in his calculation and permutation. Now, he was born incorrectly from the prince. Judah was a prince in Israel. So he was a descendant of that man. 
and mark you, his father gave him a correct name to say, oh, God gave me this son. My God is the king. When you name your child of Balulu and you don't introduce the Lord to your child, I don't know what is going to be the future of your life. Now, this man was calling was called Obalulua, but he never allowed the Lord to be the Lord over his life. You know, he came and was born in the house of bread. Bethlehem means house of bread. City of praise. It wasn't just Bethlehem. We were told Bethlehem, Judah. House of bread, city of praise. Now, there was farmer in the house of bread. There was no food. God didn't lead him. This man took his wife took his two sons and they descended to Moab and they continued there. You know whenever you go to where God not want you to go you are outside fence and outside fence there is no defense. Immediately this man got to Moab. This man died. Then it remained Naomi. I need to quickly tell you the meaning of Naomi. Naomi means my delight. My delight. Brother, my God is the king. Married, my delight. What a combination. But the Elimelech will not allow to be led by God. And that was why God killed him. I don't know why God is interested in killing the descendant of Judah whenever they play pranks on him. I don't know. He normally didn't give them second chance. Any of their misbehavior like this is gas. He couldn't. And now he said, life continues. <laughs> And the sons also said to their mother because it wasn't their mother that married for them. So the two sons now took wives for themselves. They went to marry Opha and Ruth. Now God allowed them to live there for 10 years. Ten years, I think, of probation. Probably they will see the reason for them to return. God was also waiting for his delight, Naomi, to undo the error of her husband. God didn't want these sons of Elimelech to marry there. If Brother Sik was in Bethlehem, Judah, he would have lived long. And that was one that, that and that was one that married the root. And you know, God, in all of them, the only person that God saw and was interested in her was Ruth. 
as regard Naomi, Naomi had failed. But all the spiritual experiences that she had caught in with God, God needed her to pass it to someone. That was why God didn't kill Naomi. Are you following me? So the two sons also died. Because there was a deposit in Naomi. And God wouldn't want Naomi to carry that to the grave. Now, the food that made them to leave Bethlehem Judah information came to Naomi that God had visited his people and verse 6 of Ruth chapter 1 then she arose with her daughters in law that she might return from the country of Moab for she had had in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Are you following me? Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters in law with her and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. Now I've given you the background. Now Check this verse 18 to 14. Walking the pathway of becoming the real woman. Please, bro- sisters, the only reason for the book of Ruth was Ruth. So, we will not do well to be emphasizing the life of Elimelech, to be talking about Mylon and Kilion, even to be talking about Naomi. So, we need to discuss only root, because that is the reason for the book of root in the Bible. God bringing an unbeliever a woman who was who was a descent of an accursed person and yet God was interested in her life and what I mean and I'm making to be telling you this is that your background is immaterial with the matter that God is discussing here it's not about who your parents are it's not about your nation it's not about your nationality no it's about who you are in eternity. The interest that God has over your life and in your life. And that's why I want to look at this. And the first thing I want you to see and that is the cost. I want to be discussing the cost of walking this pathway. And I think I've told you the pathway is the pathway of what? Following the Lord. And I told you it is not theoretical. It is practically following the Lord. Now, what will it cost you? And this is what we want to highlight. The first is that you got to see him that is invisible. In all of this terrible circumstance, Root saw something. Not just something. Root saw someone. She saw the Lord in Naomi. And that also attracted a person of friendship to be attached and clung unto Naomi. 
and you will see this in verses 8 to 14. And Naomi said unto her two daughters in law, Go, return it to her mother's house. The Lord did kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters, why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have an husband. If I should say, I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight, and should also be her sons, will you tarry for them till they were grown? Will you stay for them for having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieved me much for your sake that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again and up her keys, her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. What made Ruth to cleave? to Naomi despite that the hand of God was against Naomi the death of Elimelech was the consequence of his action now the death of the two sons of Naomi they were the bitter hand against the bitter hands of God against Naomi now in all of that and you know when God is bitter if the hand of God is bitter against you your normal response also is to be bitter with God but Naomi didn't agree with God she submitted she knew that that was the consequence of her own action too because she was reluctant to return to where she came from now, but root in all of this negativity, the heart of root wanted the God of Naomi. And as it were, root had seen God in Naomi. sisters I pray that God will open your eyes when some people see contradictions or negative things around a spiritual man or a spiritual woman and they concluded that they cannot identify with him or her it is because they had never seen God. What sort of people they are looking for? They are looking for good environment. And they are looking for something to add to themselves. They just want to boast of this person because things are getting better for him. But when things were getting worse, for Naomi. When it appears that Naomi's life was not promising, it took the highs of faith for one to continue with such an individual. If you look at the beauty of Esther, an apparent died, if not that Esther had seen him that is invisible in Mordecai, she wouldn't have submitted to follow the Lord God of Mordecai. I'm praying that God will open your eyes. Ruth saw him that was invisible. And that was why 
she clung to Naomi. Have you ever seen him that is invisible? In the pathway of following the law, you have to follow human being. Hello. Sisters, am I communicating to you? You have to follow somebody. And that person must not be your personal choice. It must be God that we choose that person for you. And you will see that person when you see him that is invisible. Your heart will be drawn towards that person. And you got to follow this person. That is the takeoff point of walking in the pathway of becoming the real woman. Have you taken that? Now, the second matter I want to tell you is determination that cannot be dissuaded. After you have seen him that is invisible and you have decided to cleave and you have clung for you to arrive to that destination of becoming the real woman you need determination not to be dissuaded now look at verses 15 and I will read to 18 and she said behold now before Naomi had been dissuading and he, she dissuaded the two of them upper have left now when Naomi, uh, Ruth was staying now with Naomi now it was Naomi that was now speaking to Ruth. Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. These daughters were godless daughters. Say, so, Opa could return because she never saw God. He said, she had returned back and gone back to her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Now, Ruth now have to show to this woman. Yeah, you, we were both your daughters-in-law. But we are not the same. Ruth is not upper. Upper is not Ruth. She might have the option of going back to the gods of our land. But as for me, I am not going back. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. Walking in the pathway of becoming the real woman. Now I told you that this pathway is a pathway of following the Lord. Following the Lord in the life of a particular person that God set over your life. The man or the woman that God has ordained to take you to the place of your rest. So don't, don't stop, 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 stop dissuading me to, to return back. I'm not going back. I will continue to follow thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God. God was the one we, they had before. Now, she had been born again. She had become the daughter 
of Zion as it were. Say, your God shall be my God. That woman went. He went on to say, where thou diest, will I die? Do you understand that? You can follow a man or follow a woman anywhere. But that death is supposed to reverse. Even Peter and the rest of disciples, they, they stood afar when the story of the cross began. Even Peter said, even if you are to die with you, I will die. So when it comes to the point of death, he ran back. It was only John, the beloved, that followed Jesus to Golgotha. Stood by the stand of the cross. Seeing how his Lord was pierced. And uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, they were both there standing with him. John was really a beloved. He really loved Jesus. He stood in the terrible time of trial when the other disciples and apostles could not withstand the agony to see the agony he was there and this is what Ruth was saying wherever you die I will die there will I be buried the Lord do so to me and more also if ought but doth part thee and me when he saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her. Do you see determination? To walk this pathway, to follow the Lord, you need strong determination. Strong determination that nothing will be able to dissuade you from following come what may you will keep following do you understand that eh? first seeing him that is invisible that's the first prize the second prize strong determination that cannot be dissuaded number three is to endure the shame of the cross. You will not start to follow the Lord on the note of glory. Part of the curriculum for your making, for the real you to emerge, you have to bear the cross. Now, verses 19 to 22. Once Naomi discovered that she could not dissuade her, they went together. Now, they arrived at Bethlehem, Judah. Now, when they got there, the way people the neighbors reacted to Naomi. They were excited though, but they were shocked to see Naomi to have turned to be Mara. They were shocked. It's just like when you have somebody who is who is like my messy lois in in Nigeria and travels to US and return back like uh, Dolapo or Laiwala. Do you know Dolapo? Dolapo get up. 
Now, if Mercy Lois travel to US like this, and she now return after 10 years like this, excuse me, will you celebrate her? Talk to me. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Whenever you step outside God's will, your glory will depart. Your beauty will disappear. So it was a rude shock. So those women were like, we that we endure for me. We are healthy. You know when you are coming with a woman with excitement and our people give you that kind of reaction. Please, do you still want to keep following that woman? Please talk to me. So I was saying, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know Naomi. The Naomi we know. She was rich in God. Rich in health. Rich in grace. Rich in power. How come? And that was the first embarrassment. That root up to start a life with in Bethlehem, Judah. Yet she was not discouraged. Let me read. So they two went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem. That all the city, look at, look at it. All the city was moved about them. And they said, is this Naomi? For you to know that Naomi was not just a riffraff. The whole city, they were glad to have Naomi back by implication. They had seriously missed Naomi. One white lie here. Oh God. To ban leaf when Jesus drew. When the things is getting hard, please remain where God place you. Please, I'm begging all of you. Especially those of you that God has endow you with grace. That God speak to you. You need to know that it is not your righteousness. Naomi was who she was before she left Bethlehem, Judah. Not because she worked for it. Please, I'm begging you. You know, I told one of my sons, I said, I said, your wife is useful to me than you. I said, I cannot afford you to be careless with her. Now, if, and I see Naomi, that kind of a woman that is rich, rich in grace, rich in gifts. Now, you are told of a sister that the Lord spoke to her husband that I will kill you if you will hinder my daughter. Just because the, the man said I don't want to go to VG today. Now, if you are like that and that was the kind of Naomi. So rich is just like please permit me. Do you know when they were laying the temple of Zerubbabel? You know, there was the temple of Solomon. Eh? And that was the first temple. The second temple was the temple of Zerubbabel. 
Now, there were the herders who saw the glory of the first temple, the of Solomon. And there were the younger ones. Now, 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 you get my story now. Now, when the foundation of the second temple was laid, the young ones were rejoicing. But the herder ones were crying. And that's what happened here. For root. Naomi is still rich. Are you following me? There was something she had found in Naomi. And that was why she followed. But those who knew Naomi in those glorious days, when the glory came into the temple and the priest cannot officiate, that the priests have to run out of the temple. That it was only Solomon alone that was praying. Now we are now laying a foundation of a temple that has no glory. That was the mindset of the elder. But they never knew that the glory of this later house is greater than the former. I don't know the glory you have ever experienced. I am here to announce to you if you will retain your track of to keep following the greater glory is coming upon you and the time is now it will burst forth. Some people might have seen you and say oh and they are pitying you. That is, is this not this woman that we know before? Why? What, what has what has what has ever come over his life alive now? That the glory have gone. Naomi didn't argue with them. Naomi knew what they were talking about. Naomi knew that she was no longer the person she used to be. She knew that the glory of the former has gone. It's just a residue. She was just managing. She herself was coming up. But with the coming up of Naomi, it's enough to carry root to where root was going. Now listen. <laughs> I don't know what God is saying to somebody. The glory of this little house shall be greater than the former. You are entering to a new glory. Is an era of greater glory. Amen. That's the word of God. You know, they, those, those elders were crying. And the younger generation, they were rejoicing. They were rejoicing. It was the Lord that spoke through prophet Haggai. Concerning this house. That appeared to have no glory. Said the glory of this later house. Shall be greater than the former you are entering to a greater glory. Amen. I want to beg of you. Please endure the shame. Those who run away from the shame will never experience, they will never experience the glamour and the glory that we burst forth. Endure the shame. Is this not Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty had dealt very bitterly with me. She didn't say, It is the witches in my father's house. She didn't say it's a curse upon Elimelech's head that made my life miserable like this. She said to them, and you know when you know people who know you in your former state, don't argue with their perception about you. If Ruth will be telling them, ah, God is cooking something. You don't know. You don't know. 
Uh, you don't know. Follow me, they go. They might kill her. He sits down and says, hey, don't call me Naomi. Naomi departed from you. Mara returned. But in her heart, she knew the Lord who turned Mara to witness, to sweetness. Bitter water was turned by the Lord God of Israel to sweet water. She knew inside herself that sweetness is coming again. That those who disgrace her, who pity her, they will once again gather to celebrate her. And indeed, they celebrated her. Walking the pathway of becoming the real woman. Ruth was there watching. You know, when you are following someone and that man is celebrated, don't you know that you are, you are going to be celebrated? And when you are following someone and the person is being disgraced, don't you know that you are being disgraced together? Ruth will have said, Ah, I made a mistake. But Obanekobaje is just it's just an attempt. I've just tried to I will go back. I will go back. I will go back. She didn't go back. So Naomi returned and wrote the Moabite text, a daughter in law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of Bali Harvest. The time they returned was Harvest time. sisters this thing that God is doing for you is to prepare you to enter into his harvest harvest time it was a time of harvest and it was deliberate to prove the worth of root that rot no when it is harvest time you don't sleep Ruth got to walk and she had to be diligent in walking this pathway to become the real woman. You need to be ready to walk. And you got to be a wise hearted daughter who will be diligent to walk Follow me to chapter 2 and to, from verse 1 to 3. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husbands, a mighty man of what? Of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. The root. And root the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the feed and glean ears of corn after him whose sight I shall find the grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. Hello, sisters. You need to deal with your laziness. You need to quit idleness. You have to stop being slothful. It is not how far it is aware. You can quickly arrive to God's desired destination in your life if you are wise and ready to walk. Mark my word. First, to be wise. What will make you wise? That is to walk in divine wisdom. 
when you walk in divine wisdom then you bring your diligence to bear to walk once the Lord leads you into the path you are supposed to go then you need to walk in Matthew eleven twenty nine, the message version of it Jesus said you need to walk and walk with me so Ruth was ready to walk with the Lord the Lord whom she had seen from the inception of that journey and she kept on seeing that Lord and said ma we have returned now and it is our first time we got to walk mama is old But she was young. She needed to walk with the Lord and to walk. And lo and behold, sisters. She was at the right place. At the right time. And doing the right thing. And she was connected to the man that she was meant to help the man for which she descended from eternity to time she met that man hey there were many daughters in Bethlehem many young girls who had never married at all. Many young virgins in Bethlehem, Judah. They found no suitor. Recap found a home. Hello? You know, Reka was the mother of Boaz. Do you know that? So, when the Lord was leading Reka, the Arlot, to marry the father of Boaz, Salmon, there were many young virgins that the Lord will never allow Salmon to marry them. But for this Arlot, <laughs> it's not about your past it is about who God knew you to be in eternity so there were so when Ruth also came there were many young girls who were waiting to be married. Probably praying and fasting. And sow seed. As some men of God will have asked them to sow seed. <laughs> but they don't know that God walked by principles. That until you follow the Lord, you will not get connected to the man that you needed. Please, are you following me? Now, look at verse 3. And she went and came and gleaned in the feed after the repast. And her heart, and her heart was to light on a part of the feed belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Hey. In Psalm 37, verse 23. The Bible said the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. I don't know if you have living Bible. Please read living Bible for me. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. If you have living Bible, read for me. I just want you to understand being at the right place at the right time. 9 11. And doing the right thing. Yeah. Again. 9 11. Okay. The sweetest person, the swiftest person, uh -huh, does not always win the race. None the strongest person. Uh -huh. The wise men are often poor and skillful men. Are, are not necessarily famous. Okay. But it is all by chance. Now look at that. It is all by chance. And that is what verse 3 of chapter 2 say. A harp was to light on a path. That is, it happened by chance. It was not orchestrated by Naomi, nor by Ruth herself. Others in the land everywhere. But the Lord whom Ruth saw was leading her, leading her, leading her, and she, God led her to the feet of Boaz, who was a family member of Elimelech. Elimelech is supposed to bring forth Obed through Naomi. But because he wouldn't allow God the king to be leader over his life. God terminated his life. Yes. By happening to be at the, at now, the right place. Look at it. By chance means happening to be uh -huh. at the right place. At the right place. At the right time. At the right time. Thank you. Being at the right place and at the right time. Not just being there, I do. It is to be there walking. Do you get me? Walking. And let me give you seven manners of this walking. How do I walk? When I've gotten to the right place at the right time, I got to walk inspiringly. That it must be the Holy Spirit inspired. And it was the Holy Spirit that inspired Ruth to walk. You got to walk wisely. She was gleaning in the field after the reapers. She was not leading the reapers. She didn't say, I am endowed. I have grace. I can walk. I can even walk faster than them. She didn't lead the reapers. She was behaving wisely as she was walking. And thirdly, she walked diligently. The Bible says, See, is doubt a diligent man in his walk? He will not stand before me, man. We stand before kings. She walked. Diligently. Number four, she walked productively. She was gathering, gathering productively. Some people walk, but they are not inspired by the Holy Spirit. Some people are just walking aimlessly, they are not walking diligently, they are not walking wisely. She walked productively. She walked 
purposefully. The purpose, there is a purpose in her heart. And her purpose was to make her mother-in-law comfortable. When, she, when, when Ruth saw the way those women were talking about talking about Naomi and said, is this Naomi? Is this Naomi? Ruth took challenge. I'm going to remove the disgrace of this woman. I'm going to restore her glory. Yeah, she was not well felt. But now I'm going to walk. She's going to be well, she's going to appear healthy and robust to the glory of God. That was her motive for walking. Not that she was walking in order to look for a man to woo. No. She walked purposefully. She walked profitably. She walked progressively to the end. From dawn to dusk, she didn't stop walking when the reapers were still on the field. I've given you seven manners, seven ways to walk. So when Jesus said, walk with me, he wants you to walk with him inspiringly. He wants you to walk with him wisely. He wants you to walk with him diligently. He wants you to walk with him productively. He wants you to walk with him purposefully. He wants you to walk with him profitably. He wants you to walk with him progressively. And as you are making progress, you should increase. You should increase in your productivity and in your profitability. That is when you are the real woman. You can't afford to be lazy. You can't afford to be lazy and say you are a real woman. And be boasting and say God has made me to be a woman to be help to people to, to men or to man. You, you cannot help yourself when you are not walking in these seven ways. And, and I need to tell you sisters without you walking with God and walking in these seven ways you are not indispensable to any man so what makes you to be indispensable is to have the Lord leading you in your walking and you have the Holy Spirit inspiring you to walk and you are walking diligently in that which the Holy Spirit inspire you to do and you are walking wisely in that which the Holy Spirit inspire you to do and you are walking purposefully and you are walking diligently and you are walking uh, productively and profitably and progressively that's what makes you indispensable Verse 23. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end. That's what I mean. Progressively to the end. To the end of barley harvest and of wheat harvest and dwell with her mother in law. It is harvest time. For me, I'm not to harvest wheat or barley. I have a decade of harvesting souls in the motherland. And I need the real woman who is indispensable. Who will walk with the Lord and be inspired by the Lord and will walk wisely and will walk diligently 
and we walk purposefully and we walk productively and we walk profitably and we walk progressively to the end not somebody who will do little and say I'm tired I was telling that baby, I, I read something. <laughs> I said, so we just realized that God who led us to be going from house to house actually meant us, meant us to be good. So I was telling I said, I read that when a man sits down and he doesn't walk around, if he is 40 years old by the time he is like that for 10 years and you know many of you your walking has been from toilet to bathroom bathroom to kitchen kitchen to bedroom and again from your bedroom to church and you can never go far your church is very nearby fellowship center and uh, and uh, if you are to go to general gas you have to look for kada or look for lift and that has been the way so that research said your legs will grow old by the time you are 40 you'll be having 60 years old body Now, but when you walk around, when you walk around, when you walk around, he said that Isaiah, they said the fifty percent of human bone is in the legs. The legs. Because it is our feet that carries the weight of the body. So when you don't exercise that legs you grow old faster. So for me, when God said, you have to be going from house to house, God has given me longevity in disguise. So I was able to say like Caleb when I'm 85, give me this Monday. Give me this Monday. And I will conquer. At 85, So, sisters, I'm dealing with walking in the pathway of becoming the real woman. Are you following me? You can't be following Jesus and you are not actively walking. It's not possible. You got to walk. And as you are walking, you walk. What next? This woman, she reported her movement. If you are going to become the real woman, you must learn the art of reporting yourself. You have to report your movement. Look at verse 18 to 22. 18 to 22. And she took it up and went into the city and her mother-in-law saw that she had gleaned. What she had gleaned. And she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought and said the man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. And 
Naomi said unto her, Daughter in law, blessed be he of the Lord, who hath not let of his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near of king unto us, one of our next kinsmen. And Ruth the Moabite said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have entered all my affairs. And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. Now, sisters, you must learn how to report yourself. That's how you will land in that destination that God had predestined for you. You have to report. Boaz was interested in this woman because of the nature of and the manner with which she walked behind the reapers. And the testimony of his reapers about her, her character. Can I leave that with you? Another thing, number seven. You have to learn to receive fresh instruction that will take you to the next level where you will find the rest. And that's what you have in chapter 3. You needed fresh instruction. Ruth needed fresh instruction. Now she has been in the right place. The right feed where she needed to be. But more than that, she needed a man to pour her life into. And as far as Naomi was concerned, Ruth had connected the man. Boaz was the man. <laughs> Chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee? That I may be well with thee. And now is not Boaz of our kindred with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. Now, the contemplation in the heart of Naomi was the next level for Ruth. But she needed fresh instruction. And look at verses 3 and 4. That's where you have the instructions. Wash thy said therefore and anoint thee and put thy raiment upon thee and get thee down to the floor but make not thyself known unto the man until he shall have done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down and we tell thee what thou shalt do. What does this instruction imply in your case? I know you are bath this morning. And you know you bath every day. I know you have put on you 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 cream your body, you powder your face. But this thing has spiritual meaning. When you say wash thyself, number one, daily cleansing by the blood of Jesus. Sisters, can I ask you, why do you bath every day? Some of you bath thrice in a day or twice in a day. Abby, 
Why do you bath? You want to smell good. Your spiritual life needs cleansing. Your spirit needs cleansing. Even when you are holy. Now, sisters, when you bath every day, when you bath in the morning, you bath in the night. Is it because you are wallowing in mud? And you just know that in the exercise of the day you have sweat. So, in the spirit life too, every day of our lives, we need daily cleansing. In the blood of Jesus, don't say, I am blood washed. My sins are forgiven. I am not a sinner. You need to wash again and again. Just as it is that in your physical body, it is not just one time in a day you bath. When you, when you need it, you know, some of you are very decent women. I know. That when you do the house call and you sweat, the next place to go is the bathroom. Is my assumption right? You come out again and you are walking and walking and you are sweating again. The next place to go is what? Bathroom. In the same manner, our spirit needs such sanitation. In the blood of Jesus. So when he said anoint thee, you need fresh oil of the Holy Spirit. At every discharge of duty, ask for fresh anointing. Ask for fresh power. And say, put thy raiment upon thee. That means always put Christ's character. You put off the old man to put on the new man. And he said something. He said, get thee down to the floor. Means die daily. Humility. Be humble. Get thee down to the floor. God does not promote the proud. He promotes the humble. You can't get to the next level with your arrogance. Except the wheat, the grain of wheat falls to the ground and die. It abides alone. You cannot transit this phase to the next level. If you will not come to the ground, get thee down to the floor. And he said, But make not thyself no one to the man. What is the meaning of that? Be self effaced. Be self effaced. That is, don't advertise yourself. Don't flaunt yourself. Don't tell somebody that you are somebody. And that was the instruction. Our root must behave with boas. Don't speak arrogantly that you know. Be self effaced. When God is doing greater things through you, hide behind the cross. Let people know that it is not me. It is not my righteousness. It's not because I know how to pray. It is the grace of God. Be self-effaced. You need to learn wisdom from Jesus. Many times Jesus will perform miracles and we want people, especially in the book of Mark, Go and read the book of Matthew. That is where you'll be seeing Jesus. Other gospel writers, they didn't say it. You will be standing there and say, don't tell anybody that I'm the one who did it. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. What was it? It was hiding. 
Learn to be self-effaced. And he said, when you see that man lie down, mark the place. What does that mean? Mark the place of God's presence. There is a place where you meet God regularly. There is a place where you discover God. Mark the place. Set the Lord to be before you. Let him always be at your right hand. Set your gaze on him. And he said, once you mark the place, do it there. I said, lie there. Go in there. Dwell there. Dwell in Christ's presence. And he said something again. He said, <laughs> when you lie down, uncover his feet and lay thee down. <laughs> what does that mean? Dwell before God and learn at Jesus' feet. That's what it means to uncover his feet. That is how to get there. Please, do we learn to that point? And Ruth did exactly. Do you know the next thing? In walking in this pathway to arrive to God's desired destination for your life, you have to present your proposal. present your proposal. Don't you know that this is the, where a woman proposed to a man, Ruth? Eh? Ruth proposed. But I'm not talking of married proposal here. I'm speaking something that is heavier than Marry proposal. When I say present your proposal, make your intention and mission known. Let that man know that, sir, I am meant for you. I descended from eternity to time for you. I am here to pour my life into what you are doing. I have seen in him pouring my life. I will have the expression of my purpose and I will have sense of fulfillment. Ruth presented a proposal. Verses 8 to 13 and it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself and behold the woman lay at his feet. He didn't sleep yesterday with a woman. Now he woke up in the midnight. Midnight means 12 a.m. 12 midnight. And she said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am root. If you are not a fake, you will not be doing him. Let's say, Okoni. Lale. Loru. TV, you know how you normally do. Uh, you should understand now. Say, Who art thou? I am root, thy handmaid. Look at that woman. He says, Spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid. That was our proposal. For thou art a near kinsman. 
And you know, a man of purpose will not take advantage of a woman or use that to abuse her. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord. Imagine, imagine, if you are to bring common sense here, what would you think that Ruth would have normally expected? With the way this a disciple maker led her to do. See, my mother, I'm a bell corny. See, Musukin, I'll be more yaro. But she was not arrogant. She was humble. She loved her. She loved God. She loved her mother in law. Now, he says, Sir, spread your skirt on me. I am your, I have come under your wing to do it. That's the meaning. She was saying, I'm, It's not sex that I need. I needed something more than that. I am here to fulfill purpose. And that man said, Blessed are thou of the Lord, my daughter. Now listen. Now, Boaz was not a young man. Hello. Now, when Boaz said, "My daughter," you know she has been, he has been calling Ruth, "My daughter, my daughter," shows that age. Yeah. Boaz was old enough to be the father of Ruth. Now, if you are a single and you are expecting to be married. And you are expecting brothers with containing trousers. And the person that your disciple maker led you to go and marry is a man who is old enough to be your father. How would you? And you know, not all men have good physical. Do you understand? You know, there are some brothers that have good physique that they are old enough to be your father. When they are still beside you, they can be thinking, Is that your boyfriend? You don't know. Yeah, it's your father, but somebody will ask you, Is that your boyfriend? They say, No, it's my father. Hey, that man. Baba is safe now. <laughs> you have not heard that. They have said that to me many times. I'll be going with my daughter. I say, is, is that your dad? Is that, that's, is that your boyfriend? I say, no. It's my father. Ah. So I buy a cafe now. For one, I buy a cafe. <laughs> now, where I'm going is this. Not all men have such frame. Some people, they are old and they are old. And some men are old, yet they are young. Me, I don't know the kind of boas. But one thing is, even if that man is old and has a young body, the truth of the matter is that he is old. <laughs> this, this last week, I was to give a man tract. So, and I was going to him to give him out. I never knew he was a drunkard. So I said, Alagba, I want to share. I said, Ah, Baba, a worry, a bani, a mad dag by and I let me on what you owe to you. Ah, well, let me go. What bonan you will leave all of us. I will me and my wash for me and my wash for my bani. So I never knew I am a hood man. <laughs> you know. So, so women were looking at us, and those one lad, one the pastor, he got money or something. He really embarrassed me. <laughs> now, what I'm saying is that even when it appears that you are young in your body, if you are old, you are old. So, Boaz said, "My daughter." For thou hast shown more kindness in the later end than at the beginning. 
in as much as thou followest not young men whether poor or rich and now my daughter fear not I will do to thee all that thou requires what if she didn't present a proposal what if she didn't make a mission known That's why I asked you yesterday. I asked you to go and pray. What is the motto of your life? You must have driving force. Your life must get bearing. You got to have focus in life. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman. I'll be it. There is a kinsman nearer than I. Now, he now stood her. Tarry this night. Tarry this night. After you have made your proposal, water it in with midnight prayers. Water it. Once you have made your mission known to the man, this night and it shall be in the morning that if he will perform unto thee the part of kinsman well let him do the kinsman part but if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee then will I do the part of a kinsman to thee as the Lord liveth then Boaz gave another instruction and I want to give you is another principle for you to arrive where you are going. He said, lie down until the morning. That is, relax. Don't worry yourself. Don't worry yourself. Please, do you learn to this point? Eh? Let me now give you another principle. You have to learn how to seal your lips. After you have presented your proposal, you got to wait with seal lips. The proposal you presented shall be processed. So why the process is ongoing? Seal your lips. Look at verse 14. And she lay at his feet until the morning and she rose up before one who know another. And he said, let it not be known that a woman came into the flock. You, it is not everything about your life you tell people. seal your lips if Ruth started to broadcast it that I went in the midnight to where Boaz was hello hello do you know that Boaz had slave girls and she have many women working as his staff majority of them will have been desiring to be his wife Hello, am I communicating to you? If Ruth have to share that with other sisters who are workers of Boaz, don't you know that they will truncate that vision? Hello, I don't know if I'm communicating to you. Be wise, seal your lips. Say, don't let it be known to anyone that a woman came here. Excuse me. Did Boaz have something to hide? Eh? Now, if Ruth went about to be talking about it, 
Did Boaz have something to lose? Talk to me. So when he said to her, seal your lips, it's for her good. Again, do not sidetrack your disciple maker in the process. Keep him or keep her posted on your case. When Boaz said, seal your lips, that does not mean that Naomi should, and Naomi should not heard about it. And you know in verse 16 to 18, because if she will not tell Naomi, she will also miss another instruction. And when she came to her mother in law, she said, Who art thou, my daughter? And she told her all that the man had done to her. I don't know what they do. I'll be from the report. Do we see from this account? Did we read that that uh, Boaz did something? Eh? You are not following me. You know, sometimes you are back here. We are saying one kini mose. Back over me. Kini mose. Now here, kuni bukbunto si. I be calling you back. In te meka masoro ni. But the woman went ahead to report all that the man had done. Don't imagine that it is so. The Bible just said, she told her all that the man had done to her. And she said, this six mayor of the valley gave him me. For he said to me, go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Now, the response of Naomi. Then said, see, sit still. That's another instruction. Sit still. Sit still. Don't bring it to pass by yourself. God will take care of it. What you are to do is what I have told you to do. And you have done it. And the, the result that I'm expecting, you have had it already. Sit still. Keep relaxing. Don't flex muscle. Wait until it is done. Say, sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he has finished the thing this day. You know, Boaz went to work, chapter 4 from verse 1 to 5, because of my time. It was the man that was that supposed to take in human sense who's supposed to marry root was irresponsible and he was a greedy dog when they advertise when Boaz advertise to this mister such a one a man who has no identity when you marry a man who has no identity, your life disappears. It evaporates like a vapor. He said, Oh, our brother Elimelech have a fido. So buy it. Oh. And he said, I will buy it. I will buy it. And Boaz added, The day you buy that feed from the hand of Naomi, you will also buy root the Boabites. The wife of the dead. To raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. Sisters, you are not meant for everybody. 
notre homme a capacity to take you. you your purpose there is a man who has the strength for the expression of your purpose. So, the one who only want to catch fun of your gift and of your talent, they will not be ready to permit the expression of your purpose. We wish the reason of your creation. So, when Naomi said, sit still, because if you are going to be going about this matter, you will end up marrying a non-entity. But that man that has spoken to you, he will work on it. And eventually, the man backed off. Now read from verse 6, chapter 4 now. And the kids man said, I cannot redeem him for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem him. Now this was the manner in former time in history, concerning redeeming and concerning changing, for to confirm all things, a man plucked off issue and gave it to his neighbor. And this was a testimony in history. Therefore the kids man said unto Boaz, buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. And Boaz said unto the elders, and to all the people, ye are witnesses this day that have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Kilons and Mylons of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth, the Moabites, the wife of Mylon, have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren. And from the gate of his place, ye are witnesses of this day. Now look at the elders. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that is come into thy house like Rachel and like Leah. And which two did build the house of his strength and do that worthily in Ephrata and be famous in Bethlehem. And let the house be like the house of Pharis. Now they were referring to the twins that were born by Tamar. Whom Tamar bear unto Judah of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. So Boaz took root and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception and she bare his son. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be thee this day without a kiss, man. that his name may be famous in his strength, and it shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thy old age for thy daughter in law, which is which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons had born him. And Oim took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the women and neighbors gave it a name saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He's the father of Jesse. The father of David. Hallelujah. Ruth eventually landed where she belonged. Vision was realized. Dream came true. She was connected to Boaz and she bring forth God's desire. Obed was born. Beloved, I want to round up. Please pay attention to verses 18 to 22. The story of Ruth, I believe, is supposed to close with verse 17. So why this verses 18 to 22? And that was where Matthew chapter 1 that I started from is a matter. Walking the pathway of becoming the real woman. Now, these are the generation of Pharisees. Pharisees begat Estron. 
Esther begat Ram, and Ram begat Aminadab, Aminadab begat Nason, and Nason begat Salmon. Salmon begat Boaz. Who gave birth to Boaz? Eh? Eh? Rechab. Rechab was the wife of Salmon. Please, the way I used to think. Do you think that Boaz didn't have any child before Ruth came to his life? Eh? Now, and Boaz begat Obed. All the children that Boaz had before Ruth came, God never reckoned with them. Except Obed. And Obed gave back to Jesse. Jesse gave back to David. Sisters, why did I go to this? Conclusively. Follow me to Proverbs. I just see the reason why the Lord said acknowledge him in all your ways trust in the Lord Proverbs 3 5 to 7 trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding if this man now don't let me talk about men we are dealing with women here if these women Kama, Rekab, Beersheba, and again Ruth, if they had leaned on their understanding, if they had not trusted the Lord, verse 6, if they have not acknowledged the Lord in all their ways to direct their path, if they were wise in themselves, they will have died in non-entity. Sisters, I want to beg of you, stop trusting your brain. Stop working with your common sense. Stop doing things by yourself. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. For Tama, Tama said, whatever happens to me, I believe God is in charge. Beersheba said, whatever happens to me, God is in charge. I can't be condemning myself. I can't allow what people say about me to, 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 to determine who I am. Rekab said, I wouldn't mind People calling me Rekab the Harlot. It's immaterial. They all allow the law to direct their path. And they were not wise in themselves. Sisters, please, I am begging you, stop being wise. Submit. Can you, for God's sake, become a fool? Already, the situation and circumstances of your life has made you a fool. But to arrive to where God is taking you, please choose to be a fool. Allow the Lord to lead you. And please flow along. Please, I'm begging you, flow along. If Tamar refused to flow along that path, she would never arrive. If Rekab would not flow along, she would never arrive. If Beersheba Asked to be bitter and bitter to David and never flow along. 
she will not bring back to bad Solomon who became the king if Ruth will not play along she will not arrive a serve and a disciple maker they were celebrated at last rise to your feet this conclusion is a matter it's a matter to trust the Lord with all your heart that's what will make you to flow along not to lean on your own understanding we help you to flow along and to acknowledge him in all your ways. And to allow him to direct your path. Will you say, Lord, how we, how we follow you? How we flow along? I wish to make an altar call. But you can answer to that altar call in your spirit. That here am I, Lord do to me at its cement good to you. Here am I, Lord. Can you tell him I am not wise? I choose to be a fool before you. I am ready to follow you. Even when your leading is ridiculous, even when what is playing out to me looks abnormal. Even when your way, your way of bringing me into the limelight of glory appears indecent. Lord, I will follow you. I will not be argumentative. I will not, st I will not be stubborn. I will not walk in arrogance of my heart. Lord, I plead with you. Show me mercy. 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 Lord, I plead with you. I need not to lean on my own understanding. I need not to think that I'm wise. Why would I be proud? Lord, please pray that God should deliver you from pride. Lord, show me mercy. Show me mercy. My life must bring glory. Yeah. Must bring glory, must bring glory, must bring glory. Help my heart to trust you with all my heart. Oh, sisters, never rely on what you think you know. Many times we don't know what we think we know. Oh, remember the Lord is in everything you do. He will show you the right way. Just pray and say, Lord, show me the right way. Never let yourself think that you are wiser than you are. No, Lord, I'm not even wise. How will I be wise before the most wisest God? The wisest God. Lord, I pray, show me mercy. Now I know that I don't know what I think I know. Yes, Lord. I, yeah, I know that I don't know. It, I, I just realized I, I don't know what I think I know I know. Baba, I will never again be wise before you. Pardon me my pride again. Pardon me. Pardon me of my pride. Pardon me of my pride. Pardon me of my argumentative spirit. Pardon me of my proud talk and my proud look. 
I plead with you, God, be merciful to my heart. Be merciful to my heart. Help me to love you. Help me to love you. Help me to love you. We have entered into prophetic prayer. We cannot, we cannot enter into what God wants to do except we trust him. And that with all of our heart. With all of our heart. Ruth was doing everything with all of her heart. All of her heart. She never relied on what she thought she knew. Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. Oh God, I know you are deep. I know you are dynamic. That is coming to me now. Uh, it's recently, this is my recent discovery about you that you are too deep. You are, you are dying.